This podcast is a summary, a very brief summary, of what we've talked about this semester. And uh, the crucial item here is to remember that the way we laid this out was to see the Bible as centering in the death and the resurrection of Jesus uh, for a couple reasons. One is that that's the logical theme, the central point of the Bible, but also because literally more space is given to the few hours surrounding the death and the resurrection of Jesus than is given to anything else comparable in Scripture. So just on the basis of how much time is given to those few hours in which Jesus died, was buried, and raised from the tomb, you get the sense that that is, in fact, the very center of the biblical revelation. But also, of course, the Bible leads up to the death and the resurrection of Jesus, and then following the death and the resurrection of Jesus, you have the application of what that means. So if we were to picture this as a series of concentric circles, we would put the death and the resurrection of Jesus right at the very center, the bullseye, ground zero, or whatever you want to call it, of the whole picture. Then following that, you would add to it the life and the teachings of Jesus in the next circle going outward. The stories of what Jesus said and what Jesus did encompass the death and the resurrection of Jesus and give meaning and context to his death and his resurrection. In the same way, the next circle outward is the New Testament story, the story of Jesus' birth, how it fits together with John the Baptist and the prophecies about the one who would be the forerunner, and of course the epistles of the apostles, and the book of Acts and all that that means for the story of the church, and then finally the book of Revelation. The New Testament story gives context to the life and the teachings of Jesus, which in turn gives context to the death and the resurrection of Jesus, which, as we said, is right at the very center of all of these concentric circles. In the same way, the Old Testament story gives context to the New Testament story, which gives context to the story of Jesus. So the Old Testament story is the setting in which you find the New Testament story. It's the story of the creation, it's the story of human beings, it's the story of the fall, it's the story of God's covenant with Abraham, it's the story of the Jews, their captivity, their exodus from Egypt, their settling in the promised land, it's the story of their kings and their prophets and their patriarchs, it's the story of prophecies, particularly the prophecies about the coming Messiah and what he would do when he comes. The Old Testament story is very necessary for us to understand the New Testament story, which in turn is necessary for us to understand the story of Jesus. Then in the outer circle, we have the universe and the world of nature. The idea that the universe itself tells us something about God. It tells us at the very least that our arrival here was probably not an accident. It was probably not the result of time plus chance that probably our presence here in the universe is a result of an intelligent design carried out by a powerful designer and that as we look around we see the evidence of the designer's fingerprints here and there throughout the creation and we get some sense of ourselves as creatures and some sense of a transcendent other as creator. Now to be honest there's not a whole lot more that we can deduce from the universe and the world of nature. Um, we can study it carefully like the scientists do and we can come up with all kinds of lessons about care in creation and execution but it doesn't help us a lot to understand everything that we need to know which is why general revelation is not adequate, which is why God had to go on and give a special revelation, the revelation of the prophets, the revelation of the scriptures, and most of all, of course, the, res the revelation that comes through his son, Jesus Christ. So we distinguish between these two kinds of revelation, general revelation, meaning what you can see in the universe, and special revelation, meaning what you can see in scripture. And if you notice in the diagram, all of the rings are about special revelation except the very outer one, the universe and the world of nature. Uh, special revelation gets more and more specific as you move to the center of the concentric circles until finally at the cross of Christ we get the, the biggest understanding of who God is and what he's like, of how much he hates sin and how much he loves sinners and uh, how much he's willing to do and has done in order to redeem us and make us whole. So um, 
while we certainly can understand something about this story from the outer circles, it's only by actually being present in the inner circle and actually standing by faith, so to speak, at the cross and at the empty tomb and saying, what happened here? That we begin to understand what the Christian story is all about. This makes the complete story from the universe and the world of nature through the Old Testament into the New Testament. And uh, there's no more that needs to be added to the story. It's told now. If we stopped with the end of the Old Testament, the story would be incomplete. But now the story is complete, and everything that we need to know in order to be saved has been given to us. And all that's left for us now is to act on it.